Esteban Ocon has started an avalanche of events that are yet to unfold on the F1 scenery, and it seems like we're going to see a lot of drivers retiring and a good amount returning to the sport or debuting in the first place. After Alpine's latest move to part ways with the 27-year-old Frenchman, it is now very likely that we're going to see an entirely different landscape from 2025 onwards, with Haas, Williams, Sauber and Alpine being the primary leaders in this movie. With this in mind, where will we see the F1 drivers line up, and more importantly, who will be outside of the sport in 2025? It goes without saying that Esteban Ocon's move to depart Alpine came as a big surprise to many of the F1 fans. However, after the latest incident in Monaco, it seemed like a storm that just brewed for quite some time and needed one event to finally burst wide open. Nonetheless, Alpine now has an opening in their team, and if we talked about this a couple of years ago, it would definitely be one of the most attractive spots on the grid. But now, with just two points on their names, each scored by both of the drivers, Alpine will likely serve as either a breeding ground for young talent like Jack Doohan, or a perfect opportunity for Mick Schumacher to show that he's made out of F1 material and the treatment from Haas was truly unfair. This is why Bruno Famine believes that the German driver is one of the best fits for the Enstone-based squad, and when talking about the possibility of collaborating with him from 2025 onwards, Bruno went on to say, He's one of the possibilities, that's for sure. Like many others, Mick is currently doing an incredible job in our endurance program. What is very impressive is his mindset. Of course, he's very fast, but I think everybody knows that. It's not always useful to have a very good lap time, because you have the balance of performance on top, you have to be a bit careful with the performance. Mick from the very first minute has been very, very cooperative and really helpful for his teammates. I'm very impressed with him because he has adapted his attitude to endurance racing from day one. Everything is open for 2025, everyone is talking to everyone, and it would be a mistake not to have Mick on the list. Apart from the vacant seat in Alpine, it looks like Gasly might be focused on looking for a future elsewhere because regardless of whether or not we are fans of Ocon, his decision was made based on the lack of performance from the French squad. The financial injection they've received from the Hollywood stars did not seem to be enough to put them in the right place, but nonetheless, the drivers are now looking at the uprising teams like Haas and Williams, as well as the newbies Audi from 2026 onwards, as a proper team to join rather than the chaotic environment that is ravaging Alpine at the moment. Therefore, a lot of media attention has been revolving around the American squad of Haas, who's very likely to have a brand new lineup from 2025 onwards, as Hulkenberg decided to leave for Sauber and start on the Audi project in the 2026 season. With Behrman's place more or less secured as a replacement for the German driver, Haas might be pushing for even more changes, and it has been widely reported that Esteban Ocon was on their list even before he announced his departure from the Enstone Bay squad. All in all, Ocon is the centerpiece of the current silly season period, and so far it looks like he will be the leader of the all-new Haas lineup that is poised to bring the team back to the midfield from the next season onwards. But we must not forget about the current best driver on the grid that is without a contract from 2025 onwards, Sainz. And while he's been heavily related to a move to Red Bull and Mercedes, one of the primary reasons as to why he waited out so long to announce his future, it seems like both of these doors are closed for him. The decision would have to be made between Williams and Sauber, as all things stand. But paradoxically enough, Sainz could find his home in Alpine teaming up with Pierre Gasly and maybe salvaging what can be salvaged out of the dysfunctional team in Enstone. Whether we like it or not, the future for Sainz looks quite depressing, and in a downward trend, because no matter what team he chooses out of the three possibilities he has, it seems like neither of them will be able to provide him with a car to fight for podium finishes, at least not in the first three years of their existence in the sport. This is why Audi seems like the best possible destination for Sainz. Even though he'll be racing in the back of the grid or fighting for scrap points for a couple of years, the team is expected to be competitive from 2027 onwards, and to fight for race wins three years since their entrance into the sport. All of this goes to show that Sainz might return to the top of the sport, even though it would take four years out of his career to build up a project that is still not guaranteeing him or his teammate any chance of success. These are just pure predictions and could change in the second. Nonetheless, these are all the available choices for Sainz, and if he does not act quickly on this matter, it might very well mean that Audi won't wait too long now that they have Ocon available. Of course, to compare these two drivers does not make any sense, because Sainz won three races compared to Ocon's one. But what is worth mentioning is that Carlos drove quite a competitive car from 2021 onwards, whereas Ocon was more or less in a midfield team for the entirety of his career. 
Therefore, when you put them on an equal scale, maybe the difference won't be as big as we would originally anticipate if they were to race in Audi. Although the odds are still favoring Sites, and it would be a no-brainer to pick him over the 27-year-old Frenchman. Another massive shakeup that could happen is the move from Valtteri Bottas, who although looking forward to continuing the relationship with Kick Sauber, and therefore enter the new era with Audi, is very unlikely to succeed in this mission. Therefore, the Finn, who is one of the most experienced and successful drivers without a seat from 2025 onwards, has been looking in other teams and a reunion with Williams is certainly possible, given the fact that James Valls and Bottas collaborated closely in Mercedes. The experience that Bottas will bring to the team cannot be measured with money. But that doesn't mean that the Grove-based squad is ready to spend every penny they have in order to bring in a successful driver. They have started the season in a slow manner, and while the majority of that has to do with the car and the upgrades in the first place, it doesn't take away from the fact that Sargent has been quite underperforming in the past couple of years and is slowly but surely proving that he's not made out for the sport. In a merciless world, we might be looking at drivers who will be without a seat from 2025 onwards. And while many would love to open up the drama on Daniel Ricciardo and his poor performance compared to Sonoda, it seems like the Aussies now working on an extension with the Faenza-based squad from 2025 onwards. This is contradictory to what Red Bull and their sister team tend to do with their drivers if they fail to show good results in the first couple of races of the season, let alone the second one in a row. But obviously, they know something we don't. In this case, it's likely the importance of Ricardo to the fact that Visa signed the title sponsorship deal with Racing Bulls. This definitely gives bad news for Liam Lawson, the super talented Red Bull protege who managed to show in a race span of five races that F1 is his future. And despite promises from Christian Horner that the team has something planned for him from 2025 onwards, it looks like these are just plain words and nothing more. All of this goes to show that the Kiwi driver could be following up on his threats, which is to look for a seat elsewhere, and now that the backmarkers are offering seats a lot more compared to last season, it does look like this would be a perfect opportunity for Lawson to prove to Red Bull that they're missing out on a talent that would be the perfect driver for the senior team as well. There's some other pieces that are yet to fall, such as Yuki Tsunoda who's been constantly related to Aston Martin ever since the Honda partnership was announced with the Silverstone Bay squad. However, with Red Bull not ready to commit to the Japanese driver from 2025 onwards, and with Lance Stroll firmly saying that he believes in the project of his father's team, there's certainly no place for any other driver other than the current lineup in the green squad, even though Honda would have something to say regarding this matter. But what Yuki can be happy about is the fact that he will have secured a seat for 2025 and beyond, unlike the drivers like Zhou and Sargent, who are very likely driving their last races of their F1 careers, at least for now. Even though Zhou has shown some great potential in his first year as a rookie, all of that has vanished along with Sauber's potential to be competitive at a certain period in 2024. So, the young star could be the collateral damage in what seems to be a team that will be rebranding itself fully in the next couple of years. With all of this in mind, which drivers do you think will remain in Formula 1 from 2025 onwards, with their old and new squads? And more importantly, do you think that we won't see any of the current drivers from the next season on? Let us know in the comments below and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.